Welcome to the U.S. Impact Survey video. This tutorial is designed to help public libraries use the data they've collected through the U.S. Impact Survey in their conversations with funders, advocates, potential partners, and others. Our goal is to help you better explain the benefits of public access technology in public libraries and what libraries need in order to provide better services to patrons. This video will explain how to collect and organize data to prepare for important budget conversations. It will demonstrate how librarians can put these principles into action when meeting with chief executives or in presentations to city councils and other organizations. With generous support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the U.S. Impact Survey is available to all public libraries to use in their own data collection, evaluation, and advocacy efforts. I'm Samantha Becker. I'm the Research Project Manager for the U.S. Impact Study at the University of Washington Information School. So one tool to help librarians communicate better with um, their funders is a logic model. And, and what a logic model does is it shows the connection between the inputs that a library gets in terms of its funding, um, its, uh, it, its uh, staffing levels, the number of computers that it has, the number of hours that it's open, with the outputs, which are things like the number of classes that they're able to offer, the number of sessions that they provide, um, uh, the number of uh, patrons that walk through the door, um, and the outcomes. And the outcomes is really what librarians need to talk more about, and that's really what the U.S. Impact Survey is designed to help them do. The most important time for a library to tell its story is during the annual budget process. Leaders must tell their stories and back them up with data. Regardless of the administrative structure under which a library system operates, a legislative or oversight body must approve the library's annual budget and justify the use of taxpayers' money. Some library constituents may feel that libraries are compelling social goods and should be funded because it's the right thing to do. However, in this era of declining public resources, libraries are competing against many services that provide important social benefits valued by taxpayers. One of the most critical services provided by libraries is public access to the essential tools used for getting a job, interacting with government and businesses, learning, and connecting socially. With data, libraries must connect public access to meaningful public outcomes, like employment, emphasizing both how and what the library accomplished, as well as why funding levels matter. Outcome measures are the gold standard for public agencies. They describe the impact of public expenditures in the community and in the lives of the individual. Many public agencies effectively use individual testimonials to tell compelling stories of how the library benefited them and illustrate those stories with data. As compelling as a story may be, the data are important to enable the listener to accurately generalize a story to the larger population. When we talk to policymakers during the U.S. impact study, sometimes what we first heard was, oh, library patrons, they're just doing email or Facebook or watching YouTube videos. And once we started talking to them about, no, actually, they're doing those things, but they're doing a whole lot more, and they are doing purposeful things, and they're doing directed activities, and they're doing those things in a way that's different than people who have internet access at home do. These are people that have an hour, or maybe two hours, on an internet-connected computer in a library a day and have to take care of all of the types of things that happen online now that we all take for granted when we have internet access at home. So they go in there, they know what they need to get done. They are focused on the types of tasks, these instrumental tasks that lead to outcomes that they need to do. And we hope that we've designed a tool that's useful for you, um, that you can use year after year in your efforts to maintain your funding and develop new partnerships and do advocacy for the library. Anne Arundel and Burlington were both pilot libraries for the U.S. Impact Survey. From the survey results, it's clear that patrons are using the library's computers and Wi-Fi for a variety of reasons. Rather than just reporting how many computers are available or the number of sessions used by the public, the data tells us why the public is using the library computers and, consequently, why computers matter. 
With U.S. Impact Survey and budget data, libraries can target programs and services that best respond to the needs of their communities and that demonstrate value to patrons, advocates, stakeholders, and funders. We have a partnership, a very strong partnership, with the Anne Arundel County Workforce Development Corporation. They have job specialists, job search specialists, who actually are now placed in our libraries to work certain hours each week. We know that we've worked with thousands of people through our partnership with Workforce Development, and we know anecdotally through the U.S. Impact Survey, at least 44 people have actually gotten employment because of our services. We would now like to expand that, to be able to keep track of these people and find out, you know, in concrete numbers, how many we're helping. Coupling data with stories of patron experience augments the meaningfulness and relevance of a presentation because the listener is no longer looking purely at numbers. They are now listening to people, people who live, work, and participate in their communities. Maggie Buckholtz, Library Director of Burlington Public Library, links data, patron engagement, and community goals in her budget request to the mayor and council. When I say library, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? We asked our users this question during National Library Week. This is what comes to the mind of our community members when they think of the library. Libraries make communities what they are, and thanks to great foresight by this city, we have a library that is the cultural and community center of Burlington. In this presentation, I will discuss what the library does as Burlington's hub for information and ideas, our budget needs, and our goals for the future. We offer 50,000 books, CDs, and DVDs, and our goal is to add 2,500 new titles each year. This year, we added ebooks and downloadable audio for the first time. 32% of our users surveyed in the University of Washington Impact Study have used our library computers and internet access for educational purposes. 56% of those were age 14 to 18. 13% performed research for a class. 12% completed coursework or homework. 10% searched for information on degree or certificate programs. Six applied to a degree or certificate program, and four were accepted. Five applied for financial aid, and one student received that financial aid. We connect people to government resources, and according to our impact survey results, 33% of our surveyed users gained access to government resources through our public access computers. Half who accessed government forms submitted those forms online from our library stations. More than 25% who sought permit and license information applied from our stations and 20% who sought information on government programs and services applied for those services through the library. Our proposed budget is $501,000, most of which, $444,000, will go for personnel, our most important resource. This represents a change of a 13% reduction, or $73,000 decline from the prior year. An important issue for taxpayers is whether or not they are getting good value for their investment in the library. Compared with peer libraries around the state, our staff are doing a better than average job. We have one of the smallest staff and provide more services than other libraries in Skagit County. We rank high in customers served per staff member. We rank very high in public use per capita and we rank lower than average in expenditures per capita. We understand these difficult budget times. We've absorbed reduction, and we are working hard to do more with less. We will continue to serve the 220,000 people who come through our doors annually, and we will continue to answer 10 questions per hour. That's a question every six minutes for every day that we're open. And we will continue to offer special programs to meet the community's needs, such as improving early literacy to ensure that all children are ready to learn when they begin school. Most importantly, we will continue to strive to be seen by our community members as their friends. This is our value to the community. 
connecting with Burlington's residents, reducing isolation, providing resources for people to grow. All of these things together make our city stronger. Making a compelling budget presentation is just one step in telling a library's unique story. To ensure the story is correctly and completely told, however, it's vital to continually engage staff, volunteers, advocates, and patrons. This way they can fully understand the services being used and the impact those services have in the community. There are many ways for a library to tell its story. There's a lot of data available, but is it the right data? Each library system must determine what information it needs to collect and how best to present it. Brainstorm with your library staff, with your volunteers, um, your city council members, um, the friends of the library or your library board, all of these people together to really put out there on the table all the different ways that libraries help patrons um, achieve their outcomes. I think what we've heard from librarians especially is that when it's all out there on paper it has a different feel to it. It's more real. Look at all these things that we do with so little. Most libraries do it with very little resources. And then also thinking and brainstorming through what else they could do if they were able, if they had more resources um, to be able to put towards them. In addition to talking with library staff and patrons, it's important to consult with decision makers themselves. What information do the leaders who make decisions about your library funds want from you? So when you're dealing with funders, they really want to see numbers around things. It's not enough just to say that we offer classes um, or, or that people find jobs. It's really important to put real hard numbers around all of the things across your logic model. My job is to try to sift through all the desires, all the, the, the asks, if you will, and, and try to limit uh, the choices to those that are the most high priority. And the way I try to find those priorities, not only listening to the administrators, sometimes I'll listen to the librarians, I'll listen to the citizens. What are you looking for in your library system? And I try to work with closely with the county council in hopes that they will not cut the budget that I present. I see myself playing a facilitating role in which uh, more than anything, I ask questions of department heads and managers to try to pull out from them how their proposals do help the city meet or not meet its goals and objectives and how we will or won't uh, serve the public better. Many of us public managers just rush to data as the first uh, alternative and assume that if we just swamp a, a council with data, it will by itself tell the story. And without a narrative in connecting and evaluating that data and showing how it supports a story in how we're meeting our goals and objectives, it's just numbers on a page. The only way to find out what the outcomes are for your patrons is to ask them. And the U.S. Impact Survey is designed to help you ask those questions. I think that it's important to have internet access here for the public because many otherwise wouldn't have that opportunity. They can't afford it during these hard economic times. The free internet is good for anyone who doesn't have internet at their houses because they can come here and access anything that they would need to do that they couldn't do at home, like staying in touch with people. It's very important to have internet access because this is a computer world now. I use a computer a lot, my at home crash, so I use the computer here a lot. With patron stories and the data to demonstrate that those stories are not isolated events, a library can begin to connect the dots between how the services it provides benefit the community and why investment matters. We did a lot of research uh, into what kinds of outcomes patrons are achieving. And you could really go through that and pick from there, um, from our eight domains of, uh, of use, some questions or some outcomes that you'd like to target, things like getting healthcare information, helping people do their homework or take online classes in, in the domain of education, um, getting e-government services, connecting with government um, programs, those kinds of things and connecting that again with what your community's greatest needs are. One of the, the most important amenities that people are looking for is the library system. And I think libraries are well positioned, positioned better than most other departments in a city to demonstrate that they can meet the needs of the community to engage 
technology and information. We've just had a very innovative uh, project in our library system where we've installed computers uh, to help with workforce training and the identification of job availability. I think we won an international award actually for being able to do that. So the libraries increasingly play a critical role in job creation. Over the past few years, libraries and all public services have weathered tough economic times. In a poor economy, libraries become first responders to people in need. It's critical that libraries invest the time and energy into collecting the data and stories that not only tell the library's story, but the story of the people they serve. We have gotten a lot of feedback from librarians across the country um, in personal conversations at presentations that I've um, done and met with librarians about how they've used the U.S. Impact Study and the results from their participation in the web survey for their advocacy efforts. Um, we heard from librarians that they were able to take the reports from their U.S. Impact Survey to their city councils during budget times and get money that was uh, going to be taken away from them restored because they were able to show the evidence of the value of public access to the community. Um, we also heard from librarians how um, this has helped them understand their patrons better and the way that their patrons are using the technology and that that's helped them um, create better services for their patrons and it's helped motivate staff as well. This video was brought to you by the U.S. Impact Survey, your public access evaluation tool, online at impactsurvey.org. The U.S. Impact Survey was developed by the University of Washington Information School, envisioning a world where more effective use of information helps everyone discover, learn, innovate, solve problems, have fun, and make a better world. Information changes lives. To learn more about public access technology, visit tasha.uw.edu. That's T-A-S-C-H-A uw.edu. Funding was provided by the U.S. Libraries Program of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, working to narrow the digital divide in the United States and many developing countries around the world. The production was written and directed by ICMA, the International City-County Management Association, supporting professional local government management to build sustainable communities that improve lives worldwide. We are grateful to our partner libraries and their communities for contributions toward this project. Anne Arundel County Public Library, the essential connection to learning and enrichment, and Burlington Public Library, Burlington's hub for information and ideas. Video production was provided by Bitter Jester Creative, telling stories and communicating ideas through visual media since 2001.